facebook.com forward slash Phoenix Media Radio. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. Italy's become the latest European country to impose new measures to combat a second wave of the coronavirus, with nearly 12,000 cases reported over the last 24 hours. In Belgium, a new partial lockdown is taking effect with the closure of all bars and restaurants. Lucy Hoff reports from Brussels. The Belgian health minister has warned that the country has lost control of the virus, with Belgium, he said, close to a tsunami of cases. New restrictions are now in force, including a curfew of midnight, mandatory home working and the closure of the hospitality sector for a month-long period. In Italy, restaurants will have to close their doors at midnight and bars will have to close at 6pm if they can't offer table service. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has warned Germans to avoid unnecessary travel cancel parties and remain at home where possible. India's added over 55,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, taking the country's total caseload to over 7.55 million. The panel appointed by the Indian government to study the future course of the pandemic says infections may have already peaked in India and the virus can be brought under control by early next year. Sriyashi Mukherjee reports from New Delhi. India is seeing a drop in the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths. The country recorded its lowest death toll in nearly four months. 579 COVID-19 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours, taking India's total fatalities to over 114,000. Government officials and health experts are still urging people to comply with coronavirus guidelines. The panel stated that there is a possibility of limiting the infection with minimal active cases by February end if all safety protocols and guidelines are properly followed in India. It says people need to continue to maintain safe distance from each other and wear masks when they're outdoors. China's economy grew 4.9% in quarter three compared with the same period last year, according to official figures. Trade figures for September also suggest exports 10% higher in September than a year ago. The UK says the ball is in the EU's court if there's to be a post-Brexit trade deal. London says it's disappointed after an EU summit last week urged British compromises and failed to commit to intensified negotiations. UK and EU officials are holding discussions, but talks due to take place in London between chief negotiators have been called off. UK Cabinet Minister Robert Jenrick says Brussels needs to move. They need to show a degree of flexibility. We have been disappointed by their approach to date. They haven't been able to come to us with the detailed text that we would have expected at this stage in the negotiation. So un unless something changes materially, we will be making good on our promise to leave on Australian terms. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. I spend a lot of time in the backyard and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And at 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky. Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow, right where you live? that it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. You would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait, communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So America, let's do lunch. 
Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. What on the the following is a production of Phoenix Media. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the company or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners. Laugh it up, fuzzball. I'm about to do to you what Limp Bizkit did to music in the late 90s. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Here comes the last DJ. Gentlemen, I wash my hands of this weirdness. Crazy, crazy world. I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Tony Sanfilippo. Tony, how you doing this uh, today, and how was your weekend? Uh, doing good, man. Just uh, got up not too long ago. Just catching up on some sleep from the long week, and uh, weekend was fun. I, well, you know, I work Saturday, so that wasn't a whole lot of fun. But uh, our uh, trash co- or our uh, cardboard compactor, which has been broken as long as my vehicle, finally fixed. So hooray for my Costco peeps there. And uh, yesterday was great, man. Uh, hung out with uh, friends and uh, and my family. Watched some football. The Broncos beat the Patriots. How do you not love that? Exactly. So that was my that was mine. How about you, bud? You know, I uh, had a, a busy Saturday and sort of a lazy Sunday, but uh, got to sleep in on Saturday. Got to sleep in a little bit uh, yesterday as well. Um, but you know what? We are back with a brand new series of shows this week and uh, ready to kick things off on the week for you guys, the listeners. And, uh, you know, it's, it's I, I say it every day that we've got a wonderful show lined up for you, but we really, really do have a wonderful show lined up for you. Before we get there, wanted to uh, start off the show the way we do each and every day with a question for my co-host, Tony. Um, obviously, we connect via Zoom here. Uh, I don't know if there's any other aspect in your life where you have to do Zoom meetings or Zoom calls or conferences, but it is sort of a way of life for people in this day and age, you know, given that, uh, you know, the era of coronavirus or whatever you want to call it. But uh, what are some of the things not to do when you are on a Zoom meeting? Uh, well, don't walk around with uh, <laughs> with your wang dang out and like stand up. Like you just, you know, some people are like, cool, I don't have to wear pants. I just need a top. And then you stand up and no, you know, no one else wants to see it. Um, just know people are watching. You don't want to pick your nose, I guess, unless you want to be funny. Uh, you know, and you definitely, if you're going to say something about somebody else on the call, you make sure you hit the mute button because <laughs> everybody hears it. So there's just a couple ideas that come to mind, you know. That's fair. That's fair enough. Well, uh, in this case in Baltimore County, noises that sounded like a sexual encounter were heard during a Baltimore County school board meeting on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Someone with... That gets a... Oh, up delay. We're not working. Don't worry. We'll just keep rolling. There we it, go. it didn't fire up, but it's this problem, not it, not ours. Someone with WMAR two news heard the noises on the recording before it was deleted. The Board of Education of Baltimore County and Superintendent Dr. Daryl Williams said they are very concerned about the incident that happened near the end of the Board of Education meeting Tuesday night when inappropriate audio was heard by those in attendance. <laughs> <laughs> board, of- <laughs> board officers Koth- Kathleen Causey and Julie Hen have consulted with the superintendent, board council, and have contacted the Maryland Office of the Inspector General of uh, for Education to investigate. The information available at this time indicates that numerous individuals, in addition to board members, were online at the time. 
They do not know if someone hacked the meeting. However, that will be part of the investigation. Recordings of board meetings constitute the official record as a as advised by board council, the board directed uh, that the inappropriate portion be deleted from the publicly available recording, but has directed the superintendent and his staff to preserve the original recorded version for further inspection as part of any investigation. So, uh, Wowzers. yeah, it sounds like uh, <laughs> either they were truly hacked or somebody, you know, it was a, it was a late night meeting and somebody was, uh, <sighs> multitasking if Getting you will frisky yeah like <laughs> maybe it was a husband wife duo and it's like hey you've got this is this is it i gotta go to bed so, okay well, um yeah that's funny i knew there was problems with zoom in the beginning where uh people were hacking and tossing up uh images a la fight club and things like that so oh yeah you know yeah it, it's funny because they recommend that uh, everybody on a meeting uh institute a password Okay, seems easy enough, but of course, depending on who you give the password out to, depends on who can get into the meeting and, and do certain things. Uh, now, if they capture the video of it, they should be able to tell who was uh, at least part of the problem because it pops right, up a little window big, of, yeah, yeah. The who's giveaway right? box every time you're the one talking, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But uh, in any case, you know, folks, when you are on a Zoom meeting, just be a little bit careful about your surroundings, what you're doing in the background, and what other people are doing around you. Now, I mentioned a little bit earlier, we have a wonderful show lined up for you guys today. It is a Monday. Let's talk about today's show, shall we? Briefly, I hate Mondays. Just hate them. Therefore, I decree from this day forward, there will be no more Mondays. No more Mondays. But since it is Monday, we have our new weekly segment, Silly Rabbit. This bit is for kids. We have a segment called We Can All Relate. Our call-in topic today is the worst horror movie ever. Plenty to choose from. We have another edition of the Phoenix Tank. Yes, we uh, go over Kickstarter gadgets to see if Tony is willing to invest. We have up this day. down them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have this day in history, and Tony's up next with the entertainment news. Folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's gonna teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops, the rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and you're left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2min2x.org to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. This message is for all of you sitting in the passenger seat. And apologies if it gets a little uncomfortable, but how does it feel to be at the mercy of someone who thinks a random text is more important than your life? Someone who takes their eyes off the road while speeding along in a three-ton hunk of steel. Freaky, right? Well, why not just ask them to stop? Or better yet, volunteer to text for them. It might be a little awkward, but believe me, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. <laughs> Apparently, they have no comment. Dads, let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. Feedthepig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to start foraging wild berries. I was skeptical, but these are actually pretty good. You don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. 
You just need feedthepig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at feedthepig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. <laughs> text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. Get everything you need for the Christian Phoenix Radio Show over at phoenixmedia.us or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash phoenixmediaradio. Now back to the show. And we are back, folks. This is the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. It is Monday, October 19th. Now we have a little thing uh, called the Phoenix Line. It's a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week voicemail line, giving you guys the opportunity to chime in on anything whatsoever. Uh, maybe you can tell us how your weekend was. Maybe you enjoyed the football games over the weekend. We were just talking a little fantasy football on the break. But in any case, uh, you can call about anything whatsoever on the Phoenix line at 855-PHOENIX-RADIO. That's 855-F-E-N-I-X-R-D-O or 855-336-4973. All we ask is that you keep it entertaining. We'll compile those together and put them up in a future show. Now to the second segment of this show, and you guys know what that means. Tony's here with the entertainment news. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 19th. Let's bust in to the Filippo Fast Five. All right. Spider-Man fans rejoice. At Expo Cine 2020, Sony Pictures has allegedly said that we will get our first look at Spider-Man Far From Home sequel in December 2020. Here's hoping, true believers. <laughs> Actor Michael B. Jordan, a.k.a. Eric Killmonger in Marvel's Black Panther and his team Out Outlier Society have signed on to produce DC's upcoming Static Shock movie. Uh, hey Christian, what time is it? Uh, tool time? <laughs> it is tool time! <laughs> Home Improvement star Zachary Ty Bryan was arrested over the weekend for allegedly strangling his girlfriend. Oh. He played Brad in the show, just as you guys wanted to know. Brad. Oh. Yikes. You said that, and I love the fact that you said it was tool time. That that text made me crack up. <laughs> the this, this story behind it, not so much, but nonetheless. <laughs> Elvira has a new comic book series, if anyone cares, called Omega Mam. It's on the way. And for those who don't know Elvira, she's the uh, spooky mistress of the night. That's uh, she's very uh, around Halloweeny. Halloween. Oh my God! Who the hell is Hez? Exactly. She's got like ninety-year-old ginormous <laughs> coconuts yeah. at this point. A Chihuahua. And lastly, the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Tampa Bay Rays have set this year's World Series. Fun fact: the Seattle Mariners are the only MLB team to never ever play in the World Series and the San Diego Padres and my Colorado Rockies the Texas Rangers, Tampa Bay Rays and Milwaukee Brewers have all played in the series but never won and if the Rays win this year which would be a tough task against the Dodgers but if they do they'll be the, this will be the first time that another franchise of, that two franchises have won their first world championships back to back last year the washington nationals won their very first so interesting fun baseball facts as we go in to the october classic now we roll into the actual entertainment news aside from a little sports news i like to throw in there from every once in a while so christian you said you went to the box office this weekend and you guys went and saw the nightmare before christmas um how was that box office perform i like what was the atmosphere and uh capacity like um it was better than last week when we went to see hocus pocus but uh it was still pretty sparse i mean there were maybe 10 eh, 15 other people in the theater uh to see it and not a lot of people in the actual lobby itself it was a dollar movie so i can't imagine they made a whole lot of money but you know we bought concessions trying to help out where we could 
Awesome. Did you happen to notice that there was any new movies playing? Yeah, there was that new uh, Taken 6 or Taken 7 with Liam Neeson. Whatever that movie was, uh, that was the only new one I noticed. I'm glad I'm glad you noticed that because uh, that movie with Liam Neeson is called The Honest Thief, and that was the number one movie at the box office this weekend. All right, uh, it it played about uh, 2,300 screens. Um, it uh, I'm gonna cut all the crud in here and just basically tell you that uh, it has uh, just Liam Neeson. It basically is uh, taken. I mean. To the T. That's all Liam Neeson movies are anymore. Right. Taken um, in a plane, but... <laughs> taken on a train, taken... Yeah. yeah. And this one was... This time he was the thief, but then he had a conscience, and then they went after his family, and now he's out for revenge. Does he have that a certain in... set of skills? <laughs> what was that? Does he have a certain set of skills? Yeah. Same, the same set of skills that he has in all of them. <laughs> I'm going to hunt you down. I'm going to find you. I'm going to take you out. Um, so that brought in $3.7 million, and I don't mind those movies. They are getting uh, very much the same, so you know what to expect. But, right. hey, it's a new movie. Definitely wouldn't mind seeing that. And so, at least it uh, got number one at the box office. Nothing yeah, like having a new movie. Yeah, that. you don't want a new movie to come out just to be beat by uh, you know some old flick. Yeah, and it almost did. Nightmare Before Christmas brought in $1.3 million this weekend. So... Um, actually not too far behind it. So um, it, it definitely beat it out. It doesn't give me actually a top 10. It seems like they didn't throw that in my article this week. But uh, it, rounding out the top five was uh, Tenant, of course, is still in there in third place. Uh, in second place was another new movie called um, Open Road. Okay. I've never heard of that, Me but neither. it has Kate Walsh and Jai Courtney. So okay. uh, that ended up with one million in number three. So and Hocus Pocus uh, was the number five movie. Okay, it's kind of a jaunty little article. It doesn't have it in order, but uh, yeah, Unhinged is still there. New Mutants, Hocus Pocus. Yeah, go support local movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait till we get real box office reports. Oh, I know. Um, Theaters trying to stay alive. What are some ideas you think would be good to uh, to stay afloat aside from showing uh, classic flicks, you think? I don't know how much else they can do. I mean, they're doing everything they can, discounted movie tickets. I mean, we paid a, a buck a piece. There was a processing fee, but, you know, for five tickets, we paid 15 bucks total. And, uh, you know, concessions, discounted concessions. Uh, the Galaxy Theater actually has started doing something really smart here where they will rent out an entire theater for you for $99, up to 20 people can join, so if you've got 20 friends, and uh, then you can choose from any number of movies that they have to choose from, so anything from recent to old, and uh, that would be fun as sort of a a small get-together. If you've got 20 friends, you go to the movies for 20 bucks, Uh, I mean, uh, 10 bucks a piece, no, $5 a piece, 20 friends, 99 bucks to rent out a whole theater for you and and no and outside. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I was just about to tell you. Exactly the same price because AMC and Cinemark are doing the same model. $99 gets you a whole screen for you and your friends, up to 20 people, but you just got to be six feet apart. That's all oh, they ask. Oh, good uh, you for can, you. You can also have... Uh, current movies for $149. Food can also be catered for an additional fee of 250 I don't see too many people buying into this, but hey, you gotta love that they're thinking outside the box. Um, th- this last weekend, too, uh, John McClane, uh, a.k.a. Bruce Willis, a.k.a. Die Hard, had been teased and they'd been showing commercials. Did you see any of this over no, the weekend? No, not at all. So, so they showed a commercial with, uh, they said, the world's greatest action hero is coming back, and it just kind of teased it. So we were like, whoa, are you getting a whole new Die Hard? Oh, my gosh, you know? Well, he's back. John McClane is back. Only not what you think. Oh. It's just for a commercial. Die Hard batteries are back. Oh. And they're available at AutoZone <laughs> and Advanced Auto Parts. So there's a commercial going out. It's a little mini action film with Bruce Willis. It has him in Argyle, 
who is woo, he has gained some weight has he right really and, oh. and he's driving the old it's a fun commercial so if you're a big fan of the original die hard argyle's driving around the limo it's exactly the old limo from the original die hard it shows bruce willis in a vent and uh at the end uh argyle says yippee guy he goes whoa that's my line <laughs> so it's very cheese tastic, but it's all to hype up the fact that diehard batteries are back. So uh, check that out. You can find that on any social media site uh, and all that stuff. Just a slow weekend entertainment news that I had to throw that in. Well, to be fair, we are um, getting closer to Christmas, and Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I don't care what anybody says. It is I a agree. Christmas movie. Do you know Bruce Willis does not think it is? I heard that when he well, – yeah. the roast of Bruce Willis, he said it wasn't. Yeah, right? ah. it is a Christmas movie. Yeah. I agree. Um, so we talked about this on Friday that Dexter uh, is coming back to Showtime with a limited 10-episode uh, uh, run. Well, there's more news that came out that uh, not only is it bringing it back for the 10-part limited series, um, which was already a surprise for us Dexter fans, uh, but this time, like most shows that, you know, reboot and stuff, or they come back, they kind of ignore the obvious and just, it's like a complete reboot. And this is not going to be Dexter season 9, 10 years, or however many years have passed by. This is going to keep that original crappy ending only they're going to build upon it and hopefully right that wrong. Okay. And they're actually going to be set in modern time. It's going to take place in 2020. It's going to, or when 2021, whenever it comes back, it's going to be set in real time. What's going on in the events of the world now and where Dexter is at today versus being spoiler alert, Mr. Lumberjack. So for fans of the show <laughs> should be happy to know that they're just going to make, they will hope to make the right of the wrongs. They don't, they're not going to go back and say like, it didn't this exist. Didn't happen. Right. Deb's not going to magically show back up and be alive. Like it, none of that's going to happen. All those things from the past are totally going to be there. But that's that, man. So good news for Dexter fans, and uh, we got about forty seconds to bust into some birthdays. Yeah, it's my Oh, geez. It's not loading. So, oh, no. It's not, I know. It, go figure. Hold on one sec. Birthdays today. Zach Efron, 33. Lindsey Vaughn is a skier and Olympian, 36. She's also from Colorado. Trey Parker of South Park, 50. John Lithgow um, from Dexter, 74. Lord Farquaad. Eminem, 48. Holly Holm, UFC fighter, 39. Those are your fast celebrity birthdays for October 19th. Happy birthday, kids. <laughs> All right. Well, that does it for the entertainment news. When we come back, it is uh, our new normal Monday segment, Silly Rabbit. This bit is for kids. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. Look at this little face. I do not love him. Hamilton the Pug, Instagram star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States and the Ad Council. You make sure his toys don't have any sharp edges. You taught her what to do when the smoke alarm goes off. You do so much to keep your child safe. But are you using the right car seat for your child? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. For information on the right seat for your child, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. So you see, son, good manners are important. Should I go through it again? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome, and excuse me. Sit up straight, hold doors open, don't speak with your mouth full, keep your elbows off the table. Share your things, play nice, and generally treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Got it? Got it. And stop picking your nose. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. After my stroke, 
When Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. My name is Julius Gaines, creative writer, poet, photographer. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Get everything you need for the Christian Phoenix Radio Show over at phoenixmedia.us or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash phoenixmediaradio. Now back to the show. And we are back, folks. This is the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. It is Monday, October 19th. Now, we are all over social media with many of you watching us right now on Facebook. You can find me at facebook.com forward slash Christian Phoenix Radio. That's Christian with a K, Phoenix with an F, radio, of course, with an R, or on Instagram at Phoenix Media Radio. Tony's available at facebook.com forward slash Tony.sanfilippo. That's S A N F I L I P P O dot nine four, or on Instagram at Tony.sanfilippo eighty one. Now, uh, as we do each and every Monday, at least we've started since last Monday, Tony's going to take us through an exploration of where kids can be humorous, funny, or in this case, creepy. It is another edition of Silly Rabbit. This bit is for kids. <laughs> Monday. It's this time again. Chris, obviously you have kids. Um, has there been ever a time where the kid, where like uh, the little Phoenix brothers, have ever just said something to you where it just kind of creeped you out? Where you're like, Ooh. nothing they've ever said specifically, but there was a time when uh, you know Corbin was younger and we used to watch the Star Wars movies together, and he loved them, and he had to have this Darth Vader mask. And so we got it for him, and <laughs> it played sounds, you know, I am your father, you know, join me, and you know. And then it did the breathing as well. Well, there was one time where he came in early, early in the morning over to the side of the bed, wearing the Darth Vader mask, comes about three inches from my face and pushes the button and it goes. <laughs> and my eyes shot open. It scared the crap out of me. That was about the creepiest thing he's ever done. Uh, that actually is pretty damn funny. Um, we'll have to save that for a topic down the line. Things so that somebody did that scared the living crap out of you. I like it. As I we like go it. into that. Yeah, that's a good one, man. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, but yeah, so here's a, here's a bunch of stories of, uh, just kids not inadvertently being creepy, but saying things that just kind of creeped out their parents. So, uh, Fair enough. uh, we have, we have, uh, Amy. Oh, Amy Amen from Facebook. She said, when my husband was deployed, my two-year-old slept in my bed with me. One night, he pointed next to me and whispered, there was a monster there. I said, it's okay. Whenever you feel scared, just say a little prayer. So I started to say one. Then he put his hand on my mouth to stop me and whispered, shh, he doesn't like that. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> freaky, right? That's like something straight out of a horror movie. Yeah. Like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Serena my, Serena Roth has uh, mentioned here. My two-year-old daughter was playing with her toy kitchen, and I saw that she put a plastic baby figure in one of the pans and was sautéing it. 
when I told her we don't cook babies, she said, it's okay, it's just to take the skin off. How about no? <laughs> You're not, it's not what we do. A little future Dexter child right there. Yeah. Uh, Christy um, mentions here, when my two-year-old daughter and I moved into our first home, she once came over and gave me a hug. With her arms really tight around my neck, I pulled away and said, Ow, why would you do that? She pointed across the room at nothing and said, That man's doing it to that man. <laughs> Which is kind of weird because kids do, they, you know, you see things. It's like dogs, right? Your right. dogs see some stuff. So, Well, and kids are always the creepiest part of movies as well. You know, the, the little girl in Poltergeist, they're here. Hey, Red Rum. Right. Because sometimes you're like, ah, oh, kids in their imagination. Cute. Uh, well, the official mistake here, uh, one day I, uh, the girl I babysat was playing with her dolls, and she ripped her head. She ripped the head off one and put it in a box. I looked inside the box, and there was a whole bunch of stray heads in there. I asked her what she was doing this for, and she replied, practicing. to say i don't think she babysat that girl again <laughs> you, you know uh, when they say to, to watch out for certain behaviors in kids so, you know like if they're torturing animals they may become serial killers i'd say that probably qualifies yeah oh yeah absolutely um <clears throat> let's see i actually got a text from Lacey, so i'll put a real-time one that actually ties into that mm -hmm. um uh, my niece, Annabella, told her grandpa very seriously that his dad loves him and everything is going to be fine. His dad has been dead for several months. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just, uh, you never know. Hi, Annabella. Hi, Andrews. Okay, so Jasmine Hernandez on Facebook. We were at the dinner table when my nephew just stopped, suddenly got very serious and made direct eye contact with me saying, I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. I don't know if that's, I mean, they're, they're right there. Are you, did you, yeah, yeah. Well, you found me, I'm not hiding. Yeah, uh, are, you yeah. Liam, are you Liam Neeson? Ooh, yeah. What, what tools do you have? I have a particular <laughs> set of skills. <laughs> All right. So that one wasn't scary, but maybe this one might be. Okay. I'm ready. My husband is a farmer, and late one night, I took my four-year-old and two-year-old to the field to pick him up from work. Well, while we were waiting for him to finish up, my two-year-old asked, Mommy, who's that man outside? I responded, I don't see a man. Is your Ken doll on the floor? Then my four-year-old piped up and said, he's right outside your door staring at you. He's scary. He has blood on his face. And uh, yeah, that's that was that it. That is like, freaking. So, is it the? There was just uh, yeah. So she said she called her husband to, to hurry the hell up. We left, but my girls are now five and seven, and they said they still remember that man, and they will not go to that field. So I don't blame them. There must have been something right if they both saw it. So. Was it the curse of La Llorona? Yeah, La Llorona. <laughs> What was that uh, tone? No. La ra ra na. Ra ra la la ra ra na. Okay. Geez. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Locus. <laughs> the boring ass. That's her name on Twitter. Uh, okay. Right. I overheard a little girl <laughs> referring to the new daycare employee say, Hey, her eyes are pretty. I want to wear them on my charm bracelet. I think that's more just a kid being cutesy more so right I, I don't think they literally want to gouge him out of her eyes and attach him to a charm bracelet though uh that might be a good premise for a, a horror movie yeah hey when your kids were little did you used to use like the baby vision monitors and stuff you know where you just kind of watch them and you can kind of see a black and white photo and their eyes are kind of lit up kind of yeah we had one thing. it wasn't you know anything that was super special but uh yeah you know we could keep an eye on the kids and uh they were restless to begin with, but uh, nothing that was overly freaky or, you know, paranormal activity type, you know, with cameras all over the house and all of a sudden, you know, the baby starts hovering out of the bed or walking nothing out the side like of that. the wall and on the ceiling. 
Yeah, well, I don't think you'd live in a place like that if that happened with uh, Corver Reese. Nope. But uh, this this lady, uh, I checked the night vision video monitor to make sure my two-year-old daughter was finally asleep. Since I hadn't heard a noise in a while, I saw her standing up in her crib. She then slowly bent all the way over in a way that looked humanly impossible, cocked her head, and said, Hi. I guess it just freaked the lady out because she's watching the monitor and just a hi. Okay. It'd be creepy if the baby looked directly into the monitor and started talking to her through it. Right. Like she knew. Now's this the time to party. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Corey Dio says, I was asleep on the couch when suddenly I had the feeling somebody was watching me. I opened my eyes. There were my three and four year olds standing next to my face they then smiled and said, We were watching you. So that really ties into what yours was. Like when you're yeah. in a deep sleep, there is really nothing creepier than people hovering above you just staring. It's, right. I don't know what it is. It is just the weirdest thing. My nephews used to do that to us when we would babysit them. If we would take a nap and they'd just be sitting there. Obviously, they're just waiting for you to wake up so they can play or do whatever because right, right. you know they can't do it or don't have access to it so they're going to do it above you but if, and that is just frightening i yeah. mean not like the dark vader mask like <laughs> that crap is just <sighs> when you don't know how long they've been standing there how long they've been staring at you um you would hope that it was just a matter of seconds but uh, you know if they were just standing there for minutes staring that might be a little freaky yeah you ever think like you ever wonder like will kids accept death of uh, the loss of their animals like how they react um well we well, just we just recently lost marley and uh reese was he was upset you know but he understood what happened and why it happened and all of that so uh, yeah i think kids can understand that yeah well this lady two days after my daughter turned two we told her that her fish had died not as significant no offense not as significant as a dog but uh Knowing she wouldn't fully understand, she nodded, and she just said, everybody goes on the big train. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, granted, it's just a fish. Like, the emotional attachment of a fish, I don't know anybody that's been super attached. It's just been like, oh, I really like that fish. It was a cool fish or whatever. Right. Kind of flush it. Yeah. But no yeah. one's ever uh, yeah, not, done. Yeah, not quite the same um, bond that you have with a dog or a cat or, or something uh, that gives you a, a little more love than, I guess, a fish does. But you guys yeah. can always chime in if we're wrong. But uh, yeah. I, I agree with you, Tone. Well, you want one more? Uh, no? You know what? Let's go for one more. Let's go one more. Yeah. One. This is a creepy one, so that's a good one to go out on. One day, my son was stare. He stared at the corner and asked, "Why is that man watching us? And why is his head like this?" Then he yanked his head at a sharp angle, similar to how a hanging victim would look. Needless to say, it freaked me the bleep out. Yeah, I'd say that that would certainly do the trick. Well, folks, that does it for Silly Rabbit. This bit is for kids. Halloween edition. When we come back, we have a segment called We Can All Relate. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend. being bullied online you can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org brought to you by the ad council keyboard cat hamilton the pug and toast meets world these are some of the internet's most beloved pets and they all have one thing in common their stories started in a shelter start your story adopt a dog or cat today visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? 
Allison, no. That's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison? Why? Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. <laughs> Apparently, they have no comment. Dads, let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke. But this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign. Up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. <laughs> Text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like, like the storm. storm. When, when it kicked in, in we had we a plan. Separated. We, we were able to get in touch with each other in no, no time. Idea how to find each other. The, the whole experience, experience was, was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm to and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Get everything you need for the Christian Phoenix Radio Show over at phoenixmedia.us or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash phoenixmediaradio. Now back to the show. And welcome back, folks. This is the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. It is Monday, October 19th. Now, if you missed a portion of the show or you want to go back and catch up on any of the previous shows, it's easy enough to do so. Head over to phoenixmedia.us, click on the show's link, scroll on down to the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. From there, you can get video, you can get audio as well, or head over to wherever you get podcasts. Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Anchor Breaker, TuneIn, iHeart, about 20 in all. While you're there, be sure to subscribe. That way, you always have the latest episode. Leave a review, let us know what you think, and tell your friends because sharing is caring. Now, in this segment, I wanted to talk about things that we can all relate to. You know, there are those things that we all do in our everyday lives that uh, nobody really talks about, but we all share the same experience. So uh, I'm going to go through, see if uh, Tony shares those experiences as well. And I assume that you folks uh, listening can relate. Since the segment's called, we can all relate. So let's go ahead and kick things off with the first one. And uh, whoever this was uh, put together... Uh, basically like cartoon pictures and things like that. We don't need the pictures to explain that. Uh, for instance, this one, when you have sort of that out of body experience of me forgetting that I exist while driving. You ever do that tone where you're just driving along and then you realize that the whole last like 10, 15, 20 minutes are just gone. You know, you, you yeah. sort of space out, but you're still following the rules of the road. You're looking at it. It's the craziest thing that uh, you forget you exist while you're driving. Yeah, I drove, uh, I had that experience yesterday. I, and I have it often when I drive, which is kind of creepy. Sometimes I think in my head, I'm like, how in the hell did I not get in a wreck? Because I don't remember like the last, you know, whatever it took. So I drove down to Denver to pick up a friend yesterday at the airport. And uh, from about Frederick till I got to right under the freeway in uh, V470, that's probably about a 20, 20 mile little jaunt okay. right there. I don't remember anything from there to there. I don't remember driving it. Couldn't tell you what I had. But, I mean, I was paying attention. It's not like I was on my phone texting. It was just right. very much driving and listening to – I think I was listening to a podcast. But Yeah, uh, you sort of zone out. You put on some good tunes or you put on a uh, yeah. good podcast like this one, and uh, you just lose track of time. So uh, Yeah. Again, time just went like that too. Yeah, it's crazy. We can all relate. How about this one? Uh, when something clearly doesn't fit in the fridge, so you force the door shut <laughs> and let it fall out on someone else. Um, you know, I, I try not to do that because whatever can fall out is usually like milk or juice or something like that. And you don't want to worry about it. 
what I do similar to this is if I go to the grocery store and uh, you know we pile up the back of the car and uh, you close the hatch, as soon as you take off, you know everything sort of shifts to the back and just trying to remember that uh, when you get home, that when you open it, that everything doesn't come, you know, avalanching out at you. Yeah, I actually, I, I live alone. So for me, I don't do that to myself because haha, the joke's on me if I do that. Um, I can relate with uh, overstuffing my little freezer. So inadvertently sometimes if, uh, you know, whatever's packed in there sometimes i'll have a nice little surprise come flying out at me um but not the refrigerator but i do yeah. have that with the tiny freezer yeah. so yes i can relate at least it's frozen so it's not like it can spill all over the place but it might hurt no if it, falls it just on your it foot hurts or, if yeah. you're barefoot and that that son of a bitch falls out and hits you right on foot that's happened before <laughs> moving on with things that we can all relate to how about this is it a universal thing to brush your teeth an hour before the dentist to try and hide the prior six months of neglect uh, not for me, dude. I brush. I brush my. It, it, people at work have told me that I have the best hygiene at work because I, <laughs> I brush my teeth after I eat lunch uh, or dinner. It doesn't matter. I brush my teeth. I actually do it uh, two to three times a day, so I don't have that problem. So yeah. that one I can't relate. I don't know about the neglect part, but at the same time, before going to the dentist, I will brush my teeth like I do too, extra yeah. well, more for the fact that they probably get stinky breath in their face all day long. But uh, at the same time, you know, it, it is something strange that you go for a cleaning and brush your teeth right before. So. Yeah. What well, is even good? I brush my teeth before I do the radio show. Like, I feel like I have to have fresh breath to do this. Well, <laughs> you know, we, we have rolled out that new feature of smell of vision So, uh, yes. So yeah. when, you, when you take those little prongs, insert in nose, a la Fry, Philip J. Fry, you, you know, you got minty fresh here, baby. <laughs> exactly. All right, this next one is for all of the Amazon Amazon shoppers out there. It says, uh, my impatient ass tracking the order I just placed two minutes ago. I, <laughs> I do that. We're all uh, not about two minutes, but I'll order something. And then a couple hours later, I'll check on it and be like, did it ship yet? Okay, no. And then a couple hours later, yeah, did it ship I, yet? I have done that. No, not in the two hours. That's a little ridiculous. Now, I have encountered members uh that have called about a costco.com order and which we don't handle but right. they'll cost they'll be like hey did it hey it, it, so it's gonna ship right now right i'm like i, I don't know like i don't work for costco <laughs> it ships when it ships and you politely give it but yeah but i can relate when i'm very excited for something or if i know that i'm gonna be out of the house and i know when to expect it um i'll do an updated check just to see like if it's out for delivery you know, is it something I need to uh, be aware of, you know, because living in a uh, open area where, you know, there's a lot of townhomes around me, people who just come up, take your package. Luckily, as I knock on wood here, it's it's a really good neighborhood and it hasn't happened to me. So that's good. Um, the one that j drives me nuts is, you know, say it's a Monday like today and you order something on I Amazon. I hate Mondays. <laughs> and I decree no more Mondays. I decree. I, I'm Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it says, you know, scheduled to arrive uh, by Friday. And then, you know, you check on Tuesday and it doesn't show that it shipped yet, but it still shows that it's scheduled to arrive by Friday. Same with Wednesday. And then on Thursday, you're wondering, is it really going to arrive by Friday? Because it doesn't even show it's shipped yet. But sure enough, it, it arrives by Friday. It really does. It's crazy how it works. I had uh, two things I ordered this last week and it said expected arrival Sunday, which obviously was yesterday. Um, and I was surprised I got, when I got home from work on Saturday evening, uh, sitting on my porch. I was like, oh, well, guess uh, we did this early. But uh, nonetheless, you know, that's always kind of a bad thing because I try to set deliveries up where they're going to be there when I'm home versus mm -hmm. where I'm at work until who knows when. So. Right, right. You don't want any porch pirates coming along. Exactly. All right. Moving on with things we can all relate to. This one hits a little too close for home. Person says, five seconds after I lock the door, me, did I lock the door? Um, every time Jesse and I go out to get in the car, I will 99.99% .99 of the time lock the house door. We'll get in the car, we'll start backing up, and she'll always ask, guaranteed, did you lock the door? Yes, yes. <laughs> if you have that thought to ask if I lock the door, yes, I locked the door. Yes, yeah, good, man. I do that 
a lot actually more often than not like obviously at my place you can't just lock the door behind and just shut it um i don't have a fancy keypad or anything uh, i would love that i got spoiled when i stayed with you the keypad thing is <laughs> a beautiful oh, thing it's great uh i love it um but my place has a janky you have to like hold the door and crank the key and obviously it's something you you think you would remember but you do it enough that you mentally just zone out like did you do it and i'll drive away and i'll be like crap i don't know if i did and i'll turn right back around real quick go check and sure and enough you you usually 99.9 i've yep. never actually i'm gonna say 100 percent of the time i've locked it i've never gone and been like oh crap i'm glad i i double checked it. it's never happened i've locked it every time but i've had that panic almost on the daily i do that <laughs> all right well let's move on with the other things we can all relate to Again, another one that hits a little close to home. Does anyone ever, uh, does anyone else ever pull their phone out to check the time, but then have to do it again because they forgot to actually look at the clock? Or am I just stupid? <laughs> uh, I, every, you know, I get up in the morning and I've got a whole routine that I go through two hours before we even start this show. And there's times where you know I, I, there's I have to have certain things done by certain times, and I'll look at the clock to obviously check to make sure I'm on time. And then I'll see a notification or something like that. And two seconds later, have to check again because I actually forgot to look at the clock. Yeah, that's, uh, that's happened to me a few times. I usually, every time I want to tackle something, somebody usually asks me something or I get distracted. At work, it's a big one because I'll be like, okay, what time do I have to do this? And someone will be like, hey, can you look at my schedule or that? I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I go, crap, what time is it? I didn't even pay attention. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. you guilty of it unfortunately <laughs> here's one that uh and we've talked about here on the show my brain can retain the strangest pop culture movie tv show knowledge but i relate to this guy who says one of my biggest faults is when i ask someone their name and i forget to listen to what their name is i really need to work <laughs> on this i can't remember somebody's name i just met but i can tell you the director of an obscure 1983 movie don't know why it's just the way it works that's crazy yeah um, I pride myself at work to to learn everybody's name. I not their last name. I don't that I don't ever ask. But the first name, obviously. Um, and we have one girl that we just hired, and she has such a unique name, and I can't even think of what it is right now. It's I ask her three times, it still hasn't sunk in. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's such a weird name. Like we have one guy where his name is uh, Ikaika, and that was really hard to say. But I kept calling him Ikaka. Oh, no. You yeah. don't want to do that. Not on purpose. It was just a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, we are headed into our long break. About seven minutes. When we come back, we've got our call-in topic of the worst horror movie ever. We want to hear from you guys. But in the meantime, enjoy the news. Use the restroom. Do what you need to do. And we'll see you guys in a little bit. Don't go anywhere. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States and the Ad Council. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's gonna teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops, the rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. The stores are bringing me a baby brother! <laughs> 
can do this together. All right, let's go. Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh, my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't. <laughs> oh, man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this. You will rock this. To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hello, Kubo. What have you got planned for today? Come on, this way. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. It's the most powerful magic there is. And outside. You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. To explore our complete lineup, head over to phoenixmedia.us or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Phoenix Media Radio. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. Italy's become the latest European country to impose new measures to combat a second wave of the coronavirus, with nearly 12,000 cases reported over the last 24 hours. In Belgium, a new partial lockdown is taking effect with the closure of all bars and restaurants. Lucy Hoff reports from Brussels. The Belgian health minister has warned that the country has lost control of the virus, with Belgium, he said, close to a tsunami of cases. New restrictions are now in force, including a curfew of midnight, mandatory home working and the closure of the hospitality sector for a month-long period. In Italy, restaurants will have to close their doors at midnight and bars will have to close at 6pm if they can't offer table service. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has warned Germans to avoid unnecessary travel cancel parties and remain at home where possible. India's added over 55,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, taking the country's total caseload to over 7.55 million. The panel appointed by the Indian government to study the future course of the pandemic says infections may have already peaked in India and the virus can be brought under control by early next year. Sriyoshi Mukherjee reports from New Delhi. India is seeing a drop in the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths. The country recorded its lowest death toll in nearly four months. 579 COVID-19 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours, taking India's total fatalities to over 114,000. Government officials and health experts are still urging people to comply with coronavirus guidelines. The panel stated that there is a possibility of limiting the infection with minimal active cases by February end if all safety protocols and guidelines are properly followed in India. It says people need to continue to maintain safe distance from each other and wear masks when they're outdoors. China's economy grew 4.9% in quarter three compared with the same period last year, according to official figures. Trade figures for September also suggest exports 10% higher in September than a year ago. The UK says the ball is in the EU's court if there's to be a post-Brexit trade deal. London says it's disappointed after an EU summit last week urged British compromises and failed to commit to intensified negotiations. UK and EU officials are holding discussions, but talks due to take place in London between chief negotiators have been called off. UK Cabinet Minister Robert Jenrick says Brussels needs to move. They need to show a degree of flexibility. We have been disappointed by their approach to date. They haven't been able to come to us with the detailed text that we would have expected at this stage in the negotiation. So un unless something changes materially, we will be making good on our promise to leave on Australian terms. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. People been saying to your friend, get a different face and posting on their feed. They're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Allison is perfect. 
I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? Allison, no, that's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison, why? Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. <laughs> Apparently, they have no comment. Dads, let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. The following is a production of Phoenix Media. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the company or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners. It up, fuzzball. I'm about to do to you what Limp Bizkit did to music in the late 90s. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Gentlemen, I wash my hands of this weirdness. And welcome back, folks, to the second hour of the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. It is Monday, October 19th. We're your daily dose of laughs and levity in a crazy, crazy world. Still joined by my co-host, Mr. Tony Sanfilippo. It's Monday. We're halfway through the show. I think it's off to a good start. What about you? So far, so good. We haven't had, again, a knock on the wood. Uh, words have not been hard. We've uh, been flowing through the segments nicely. Um, no gar yeah, no gardeners in so your, uh, yeah, no gardeners out in your complex uh, blowing leaves around? Not today, no. Not a single one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I went back and listened to Friday's show, and uh, it was a wonderful show, but every once in a while you got that... No, yeah. It sucks, because where, where my office is, is right out to the main road, right here, and they were literally, like, right outside, just lawn mowing, and it just... Hard to... Hard in a non-soundproof room, so... Yeah, and uh, Tony's an hour ahead of me, so I wasn't quite sure, uh, you know... It, why people would get started gardening so early in the morning and then i realized <laughs> he's an hour ahead so yeah you're uh, like it was why the time. hell are they doing this uh at uh eight in the morning and i go well it's nine here so yeah <laughs> so like, oh, yeah that's right but uh in any case this is the act interactive portion of the show we want to hear from you guys on our call-in topic now, as I mentioned last week, our call-in topics work a little bit differently now. Uh, we're not soliciting live call-ins at the moment because we realize that some of you maybe don't have the opportunity at 9.15 here on the uh, West Coast in the morning or want to chime in throughout the day. So that's why we are giving you guys the topic the day before for you to call in and uh, leave a message on the Phoenix line. Now, again, that number is 855-PHOENIX-RADIO, 855-336. 4973 today's topic is the worst horror movie ever now uh i love <laughs> i love horror movies tony likes a, a good share of horror movies as long as they're yeah. good but he doesn't quite explore the reaches of horror movies that uh you know i, I like to go down. i've expanded my horizons thanks to jimmy jones having me on pop culture kaboom <laughs> I watch a ton of horror movie trailers, a ton. Yeah. Well, so I know a lot of horror movies. I just, whether I've actually watched them, that's a whole other thing. Well, and a ton is the key phrase there because horror movies seem to be the easiest movies, movies to make. And they come out all times of year from small budget to big budget. And sometimes the small budget ones are excellent. Other times they are terrible. Same with the big budget ones. You'll get you know movies that they've been pushing for months 
that are lackluster or disappointing. So what we wanted to do was talk about the worst horror movies ever. Plenty to choose from. For me, it was a movie that Tony and I went to the theaters to see. <sighs> had a lot of hype on it. Uh, you know, it was touted as the scariest movie ever. It's a movie called The Witch, and uh, no big names out oh, of it. Wait, no. I got something for you on that. Oh, you do? <sighs> yeah. No big yeah. names, no big actors, not a big director, you know, but they kept touting it, you know, the scariest movie in years, you know, some people couldn't even finish it, it was so scary. And you get in there and it basically worked on slow, and I mean slowly, slowly building the suspense, slow, up to a point where you expect it to pay off and it doesn't. It falls flat, you know, you expect something to happen. And uh, what happened, Tony, when uh, the movie credits rolled, lights went up, what did somebody yell in the theater? Somebody was, they, it was quiet and somebody, like Chris and I were thinking this, but somebody was like, what the F was that? But of course they really said uh, that one word, you know, quack, yeah. quack, yeah. rhymes with duck. Um, and we all started busting in just like your theater just busted into just laughing because everybody felt the same. Like what the hell was going on? Like it was the, the longest burn of a movie because it was just that slow build and the payoff was weak. Yeah, yeah. And they tried paying it off, but it wasn't anything surprising or scary or mind blowing. It was just sort of a build up to a little fizzle. Yeah, it was uh, it was extremely un it was disappointing. It really was. <sighs> what about so it's hard. I don't buy into anything that says. Well, that was the day we quit buying into IGN's rating system. True. They, they even they, said they yeah. were like outstanding. Gave it a ten, um, and you're just like, man, if IGN gave that, and all the reviews were great on it, like all the top critics, and I'm just thinking, man, how many? How did the studio pay off this? Right. You know, to say the good things because. Good lord, it was it was not good. It was pretty At bad. All. And now, speaking of horrible horror movies, any others come to mind on your part, Tone? I know we yeah, shared in that um, one, but for me, I you know I go back and I see a lot of horror movies as it more as an adult now, just to kind of see like what scared me as a kid. Is it still scary? And you know, Nightmare on Elm Street Two: Freddy's Revenge is a pile of dog crap. Yeah. It is terrible. The only thing that's remotely creepy is the beginning on the bus. Because that always used to give me, like, that used to freak me out as a kid, obviously mm -hmm. taking the school bus. That scared me as a kid. And that still is, it's pretty creepy. But the rest of the movie was very, very just blah. Yeah, it wasn't great. If I'm not mistaken, Wes Craven didn't direct that second one, right? But no, he came he back had for nothing the third. to do with that one, okay. yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Wes Craven, who's the master of horror, I mean, not only from the Nightmare on Elm Street series, but the Scream series, and so many others that people didn't even know that he made. Uh, he does really well at crafting horror movies. Well, you know, I think the second one was a little more of a cash grab. They tried uh, bringing in somebody who would be a little less expensive than Wes Craven, and uh, it did not pay off. No, that that would be mine. I mean, that's just one of many. Obviously, I, you and I are both Elm Street fans, yeah. and I'm down with the other ones. The the fifth one, the Dream Child, was me. Yeah. Dream Warriors yeah. was the best. The third one, oh, absolutely, and that one was Wes Craven. They brought back into the fold. Yep, and it, all the Wes Craven ones were great. It, it so. definitely shows. Well, folks, it's that time. We want to hear from you. Chime in now on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Christian Phoenix Radio. Go to the live uh, uh, video there and chime in on the comments. When we come back, it's all about you guys and the worst horror movies ever. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. 
Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's gonna teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops, the rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ed Council. The storks are bringing me a baby brother! We can do this together! All right, let's go! Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't? <laughs> oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this! You will rock this! To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it. As soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. <laughs> text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies. Like, like the storm. storm. When, when it kicked in, we had we a were plan. Separated. We, we were able to get in touch with each other in no time. We had no idea how to find each other. The, the whole experience, experience was, was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Get everything you need for the Christian Phoenix Radio Show over at phoenixmedia.us or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash phoenixmediaradio. Now back to the show. And we are back, folks. This is the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. It is Monday, October 19th. We are smack dab in the middle of our calling contest where we invite you guys to chime in on our topic today of the worst horror movies ever. Uh, we talked about The Witch, we talked about Nightmare on Elm Street 2, but we want you guys to chime in. Let us know what you think in the comments section of our live video right now. That's over at facebook.com forward slash Christian Phoenix Radio. Just click into the live video and comment there. Now, uh, the way we've been working these call-in topics is that uh, at the end of this segment, I'm gonna give you guys tomorrow's topic for you to call in on the Phoenix line at 855-PHOENIX-RADIO. That's 855-336-4973. And that way you guys can do it at any point during the day and uh, leave your input on whatever the topic may be. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we're talking worst horror movies ever. Tony, uh, on your end, has anybody chimed in uh, on uh, what their pick is? Yeah, Lacey has said uh, that she did not like Annabelle. She liked all the Conjuring movies, but Annabelle was not uh, was not that great. You know, I enjoyed the first Annabelle, but there's been two other ones since. Not as good. I agree. The other one is The Nun. The Nun, eh, not so much. Now, the only thing with that one is uh, they had uh, Vera Farmiga's uh, daughter play the younger version of her, which uh, was kind of cool because it, it looked like almost an identical younger version of uh you know her character from the conjuring gotcha yeah you know i liked i saw the first conjuring i didn't watch all the sequels and stuff oh no <clears throat> i i just got back into uh you and i were talking off air um we went back and watched scream obviously you watched it and i watched it and i watched scream 2 last night and one of the funny things they said they're like yeah the sequels suck and for horror movies it typically uh you know stands the test of time or doesn't stand the test of right time, right know, but uh, 
you know, some some sequels are better than others. Like we like we said, Dream Warriors was awesome. Right. But, well, Conjuring uh, Two was a fantastic sequel to the original. Uh, I know they're working on the third one, but uh, yeah, for the most part, the sequels definitely fall flat. Um, or you have sequels that have nothing to do with the franchise at all, like Halloween <laughs> Three. Um, you know, Halloween One, you had a great season of the witch. <laughs> You know, the first one, you had a great sort of twist where uh, Jason Voorhees' mother was the killer. In the second one, Jason comes back and, uh, you know, he's got that burlap bag on his head. And then the third one had nothing to do with Jason whatsoever. And then in the fourth one, he comes back and gets the hockey mask. Uh, who made those decisions? I have no idea. But uh, I have no idea. while we're waiting for you guys to chime in and feel free. Oh, you know, actually, Kendra just chimed in. She said, last house on the left that movie still haunts me. Uh, the question is, which version, Kendra? Is it uh, the original, uh, I wanna say 1979 version, uh, which was fantastic, or the remake that they did uh, about 10 years ago, uh, which was not so good, but uh, that had one of the most graphic uh, rape scenes in movie history and was definitely disturbing to watch. Nope, yeah, she said the ooh. new one. Yeah, new one wasn't as good as the original. No, yeah. I also got one here. Lacey had also said the, the most recent Halloween wasn't that great either. I agree. I was looking forward to Jamie Lee Curtis coming back into the Halloween fold. It didn't pay off the way that uh, the original really did. And even the second one was fantastic. Yeah. So, um, running down a list of the worst horror movies of all time. Here's one, Tony, that uh, I'm sure you saw when you were working uh, at the movie theaters. Actually, I think it came out after the fact, but uh, See No Evil. Does that ring any bells? Oh, it does. Who's in it? Well, it's uh, the first film released by WWE Films. and uh, Oh, it was the one with Kane. With Kane, right? exactly. Meh, meh. I, I've seen bits I and no pieces of it. I see it. I, Not yeah. great. Not great at all. Um, how about this one? The original was fantastic. It was uh, uh, Cabin Fever, which, uh, I mean, that was the first movie by uh, Eli Roth, which, you know, he came, okay. he came out and did the Hostel movies. And uh, it does a lot of the, the quote-unquote torture porn movies. First one was great. It was terrifying. The third one, Cabin Fever 3, Patient Zero, not so much. Mm, can't, can't say I've seen those. Tony, did you ever see Darkness Falls with the uh, the evil creature was the Tooth Fairy? This sort of followed, uh, you know, the ring and uh, uh, the grudge and all of that. This was their attempt to try and make an iconic horror villain, uh, and it didn't pay off. No, never saw that. Uh, again, it's all part of those that... Uh, I. I know we got a gem coming soon. We just did a, I covered a trailer yesterday for pop culture and it was called Tar. So it's about a monster that comes out of the uh, tar pits in Los Angeles and terrorizes people while he wears his safety work boots. <laughs> so some construction workers wake an evil monster that looks like Bigfoot out of the tar pits and Seriously. they call him Tar Man. Yeah. That's pretty bad. I'm telling you, right. I see a lot of weird crap uh, well, trailer wise <laughs> and it's every horror franchise's hopes to have an iconic character like jason or freddy or you know a ghost oh, from, from, from scream but uh <laughs> sometimes they feel just a little forced Ooh, uh, kendra yes. also chimed in doom generation i'm not familiar with that uh doesn't sound great though <laughs> No, <laughs> no even ooh, that was also we should one day maybe do like the the best or worst of the rock movies because doom was terrible oh that was remember he bad. was in that yeah oh. speaking of the tooth fairy not from darkness <laughs> falls but uh <laughs> and we were talking about sequels this one was i mean the second one was pretty bad the third was even worse poltergeist three where they oh, were in the, that was the one in the building right in the building tom scarrett was probably the big name out of that one again the second one was pretty bad but that was that one was awful that one was bad carol ann that shit still is freaky dude oh yeah this house is clean <laughs> <laughs> uh do you know her real life name is zelda is it really yeah that's kind of cool does she go on adventures and fight ganondorf and 
<laughs> look for the <laughs> Triforce. And... Ding, 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 House is clear. <laughs> um, speaking of remakes, awful horror movie remakes, uh, The Island of Dr. Moreau from 1996. That was pretty terrible. I don't even know if you could count it as a horror movie, but that's where he was uh, experimenting on uh, combining animal genes with human genes, and uh, ooh, it, it was it was not good. No, I never saw that one, but uh, I knew it had Marlon Brando, and he was really fat. He was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kendra followed up on Doom Generation, says uh, included Rose McGowan, It's Dark and Twisted. Um, speaking of uh, scary things, have you seen Rose McGowan recently? Yeah. Niche. I liked her in Scream. She always had those beamers. <laughs> she was great in Scream. Eyes that but, uh, her eyes were always wide open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the garage scene. Like, <laughs> that was the dumbest kill scene in a horror movie, too. Like, what makes you think you're going to get through a little dog door in your in that scene? <laughs> I, hey, apparently, if that's the only way you can escape, that's the only way you can escape. Obviously, she didn't and got crushed by the uh, door. Not, but... not with the beamers, you ain't getting No, there. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on with the worst horror movies ever. Um, I hate it when franchises go way outside of the box. You know, we were going through HBO and they've got like all the Leprechaun movies and they had Leprechaun in space, and Le Leprechaun in the hood. But in I think, the hood, and then what was it? Leprechaun returned to the hood. Oh, it was terrible. But what about Jason X or Jason oh, Voorhees is in space? Oh, oh, I mean, my stomach just churns trying to think about I who actually they thought they that. could pull that Jason off. Jason yeah. in space. Woof. <laughs> like, I found that the reason why they stretched, like, Jason X and then the one after is because they were trying to do a Freddy versus Jason, but they kept couldn't get the story right. So they had to keep the rights to the franchise and had to make a movie. So they churned out crap like that. Right. So. And Freddy versus Jason wasn't great. But it was entertaining, and you got to see two iconic characters finally mash up, and, and uh, um, it, it was a fun movie, but wasn't all that wonderful. No, it wasn't that great. It was okay. It had a bitchin' soundtrack, though. That it did. That it did. It had a bitchin' soundtrack. It's funny. I'm going through this list, and there are so many terrible ones, but uh, I haven't even gotten to one that I, I knew I was going to come across. We talk about him. We love his comedy movies at least his early ones kevin smith trying to do horror movies specifically tusk that movie was awful it was like he tried to do his own version of like human centipede the human centipede yeah. and it did not pay off it was well it even had justin long in it which you know um i kind of feel like his career kind of went off the the rails but uh at least he's kevin smith still gives him a job so that's good well but it... tusk looked Tusk was just awful. I couldn't get through it. No. It was terrible. It was bad. And Justin Long, you know, for instance, um, he was in the Jeepers Creepers, uh, the first one, a little bit in the second. Uh, that was a fun movie that, you know, again, wasn't great, but it was fun. Did you know there was a third Jeepers Creepers? Uh, that was terrible. I couldn't. Whoa. I had to turn I it off. I saw it on the four ninety nine killer sale on Voodoo when I was flipping through. It was like, well, I didn't even know they made a third one. Hey, if you paid four ninety nine, you would have paid way too much. But <laughs> in any case, folks, that does it for our call in topic of the worst horror movies ever. Tomorrow is actually not a call in topic. It is a call in contest. It's another Phoenix face off with Rank It. Tony's going to take us through a rank it list that. Uh, I have no idea what it is, and it's going to be you versus me. Now, if you want to enter that contest, it's very easy. Go over to phoenixmedia.us, go to the Christian Phoenix Radio Show, and when you scroll down further on the page, there's a contest entry form, and everybody who enters in there will be uh, given a chance to be the call-in uh, person to compete yeah. with whatever it may be. So we'll send out more information on that on the Facebook page, but uh, definitely ask that you guys uh, enter the contest and we'll have some wonderful, wonderful prizes for you to potentially win. Now, folks, when we come back, it is another edition of the Phoenix Tank. We're going to run through some Kickstarter gadgets, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I spend a lot of time in the backyard and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. 
And at 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow right where you live? That it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. You would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Hello, Kubo. What have you got planned for today? Come on, this way. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. It's the most powerful magic there is. Head outside to discover incredible animals. Wow. And beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. <laughs> So grab your loved ones and explore a world of possibilities. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. My teacher said that we should have a plan in case of an emergency. Do we have one? First thing I'm going to do is grab a flashlight with dead batteries. I'm going to start randomly throwing clothes in the bag. You two will be hiding in the closet and Dad won't be able to find you. And that's when we both start crying. Uncontrollably. Can you pass the cutlets? Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search ReadyKids at NYC.gov or call 311. Brought to you by the New York City Office of Emergency Management and the Ad Council. Get everything you need for the Christian Phoenix Radio Show over at phoenixmedia.us or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash phoenixmediaradio. Now back to the show. Now back to the show indeed. This is the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. It is Monday, October 19th. Now, uh, we have a little thing called the Phoenix Line. We talk about it a couple times each show, and even more so now that that's how we rely on our call-in uh, topics to come in. That number is 855-PHOENIX-RADIO, 855-FENIX-RDO, or 855-336-4973 for the alphanumerically impaired. As I mentioned, our call-in topic tomorrow is actually a call-in contest where uh, we want you guys to head over to our uh, website, phoenixmedia.us, click on the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. From there, you can uh, fill out the contest entry form for a chance at our uh, topic tomorrow, which is Rank It. And uh, Tony's gonna take us through a list. It'll be me versus you if you're the one chosen, and we'll let you know. But uh, in any case, it should be a lot of fun. Now, in yeah. this segment, wanted to revisit a, a segment topic that we uh, talk about every once in a while. It's something that I've actively named the Phoenix Tank. And uh, I asked Tony about uh, a couple different Kickstarter gadgets, find out if he'd be willing to invest. So let's go ahead and kick off this version of Phoenix Tank. <laughs> First up on the Phoenix Tank is a thing called the Zen Egg. It's a mindfulness tool. And for those of you who are watching, you'll see a little um, picture of what we're talking about. The backers or, or the people who put it up there are seeking a $5,000 goal, but they've already reached 21,079. 
$1,079 to be exact. Story behind this, it says, we find ourselves in a fast changing and uncertain environment, having to learn new ways of doing things and adapting to the new normal. This is causing us a great deal of stress, frustration, fear of the unknown, and even anger. Zen Egg is a tool that helps us to cope with the uncertainties and the challenges we are facing. It reminds us to create some time for ourselves only. It supports us to calm down and self-reflect, which in turn helps us to adapt our perception of the world or change our habits and behavior. Now, Zen Egg, as you can see, is a wooden egg that does absolutely nothing <laughs> it is a uh, <laughs> it's a zen egg man it is literally a wooden egg that you stick in a place to help remind you to be mindful about whatever time it is Ooh, tony's getting a call um yep i muted that sucker and uh you know it, it has the novelty of you know if you push it around it always kind of ends up standing back upright but other than that it is a wooden egg it costs thirty dollars <laughs> and does nothing more than remind you to be mindful. So, uh, Tony, the Zen egg, wooden egg that, uh, you know, every once in a while you, you, you need that reminder, but is this a, enough of a reminder at 30 bucks a pop for you to invest? How about no? No, that's a pass for me. I'm going to uh, just... Doesn't sound like a winning combination at all. No, no. I, <laughs> I, it just seems like a piece, like a wooden egg. That, it's just like... Somebody took wood, they made it nice looking, and it just sits there. And you tell yourself, you're like, oh, Zen egg, I'm having a stressful day. I've got seven trucks tonight, no drivers. How will I ever do this? Oh, Zen egg, I oh, feel guide me, Zen egg. my night. Yeah, <laughs> no. no. I agree. It sounds to me like something that uh, somebody found on Alibaba or AliExpress that they could get for $2.50 a piece and then crafted an idea or a story about, okay, how can I get the most money out of a wooden egg? But right. there were enough people who were uh, interested in it that, uh, you know, they've, they've way gone outside of their goal, but not enough for me, and it sounds like not enough for you, Tone. No path. Hard pass. All right, well, let's, let's move on to our next Phoenix Tank item. There we go. So for those of you who can see it on the screen, this is a item called Fussy, the refillable deodorant. They are seeking a goal of $6,269 and have already raised $91,519. This is what they have to say about it. We're fussy about everything. So when we notice the huge amounts of single-use plastic ending up in our oceans from everyday bathroom items like deodorant, we had to wonder if there was a better way. And it turns out there is. This is our story so far, and we'd love your armpits to be a part of it. And it is a refillable, they use eco materials, uh, impact guaranteed, it's effective, no nasties, patent pending, and you can get your fussy starter pack for about 22 bucks, which includes the container and two refills. Um, they've got different scents that you can choose from. Tony, the fussy deodorant refillable, Looking out for the oceans in the world, is it something you would invest in? How about no? No. I got a little babu in there where it was like, I think the idea behind it is neat. I'll give it that. It's unique, like refillable deodorant. Okay, but you know what? At the same time, if I need new deodorant, I just go buy a new one. Like, and if I and if I'm environmentally friendly. I will just take the plastic once I'm done using it, when it's completely empty, and I'll recycle it. And I'll only pay about three bucks and I can at least know what it smells like ahead of time because who the hell knows what that's gonna smell like. So I'll give it a up on the fact that it is outside the box thinking, but for me personally, I am not investing. Well, and in the fight against single use plastic, I don't think deodorant is exactly the, uh, the item to go after. I don't know about you, Tony, but a, a thing of deodorant lasts me about two months at the very yeah. least, you know, and I use at it every least, day. Yeah. I, I don't think we're making enough waste in the deodorant area that this would be something to concentrate on. You know, look at more other single use plastic, especially with what we're dealing with in the coronavirus age that everything's gone back to single use now. You know, where are the eco warriors out there trying to combat uh, you know, all of these little single serve cups and things just tr try and fight 
Oh yeah, well, you think chain. about that at uh, restaurants and stuff. You go to get like drinks and stuff, and you get one use out of that cup. That's it. No refills. If you want a refill, you got to go see and get another cup. Right. If you want ketchup, it comes in a little little cup. If you want ranch, it comes in a little cup. Uh, if you want salt and pepper, it comes in those little paper containers. Um, yeah, and you better shoot if you're asking for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the one thing I do have to say is in the world of uh, eco warriors, you know, uh, California went after straws, which I can understand, you know, they don't want them dumped into the ocean, but if you're a landlocked state and you have to deal with those terrible paper straws, they're awful. Oh, they go soggy after two sips. They're they're not great. Um, the potato straws, the ones made out of the potato starch, are not bad though. No, never tried those, but I can tell you, I'm with you. The paper straw reminds me of eating cereal that gets really soggy. Yes, it's yes. <laughs> it's just slimy at the tip. All right, so uh, the fussy. Uh, refillable de deodorant that's a no-go for Tony let's move on to our last one along the Phoenix tank pop it up on the screen for you there it is called tushy the modern wet wipe alternative tushy tushy when you want to wipe your ass tushy tushy <laughs> spray it when you don't have gas tushy tushy <laughs> They are seeking 5,000. I gave you a jingle for that crap. I appreciate it. Yeah, They're no worries. <laughs> seeking five grand, but they've already raised $61,608. Here's their description. Meet Tushy, the modern wet wipe technology. Sophisticated, simple to use, sustainable, and more sanitary than dry toilet paper. We are upgrading your bathroom experience. With its premium engineered components and modern minimalist appearance, Tushy is a product for everyone and anyone. The result is a refreshing hygienic experience that can be used inside the comfort of your own home. Now looking through to get your tushy, um, the early bird kit costs you $45. That includes the dispenser, the cleansing foam, the wall attachment, and the USB cable. Apparently it attaches to a USB. Um, and it looks like the regular price will be $50 for that. Tony, are you using tushy to wipe your ass? <laughs> well, that's going to be a no, sir. Um, I'm not buying into that. If I, okay, if I want an alternative way where I don't need some dry toilet paper, sandpaper, earth first, scratch my booty hole, I would <laughs> just gladly use Cottonelle wipes or Kirkland Signature flushable wipes. I was just easy on, Easy on the cheekers cleans it thoroughly all natural no big deal and it, it keeps you know the cheeks are moist when you're done you know when you go to the sherwood forest everything's clean yeah it rocks it's yeah biodegradable and you get a ton you know you were talking about the kirkland ones i use the kirkland ones ever since discovering them i love them and i use them in combination with the dry toilet paper just make sure i got everything but you can get a box for what 12 13 14 bucks and it'll yeah. last you and forever. they last ever you know they Not last forever, a lot forever. and and they come in handy, you know, they they really do. And this thing, it just seems more of a pain in the ass. Like, what if you forget to charge this thing? What do you got? What are you going to do then? What if it breaks down? What are you going to wipe your ass with? Right. Yeah, this is. You got to uh, refill it. You know? I, I don't even like the idea of it. It's lame. I got to give this one a thumbs down. Ooh. Well, Tony went thumbs for it. zero for three in our Phoenix tank kickstarter gadgets but you know what we'll post them up for you guys to check out it might be something you're interested in when we come back it is time for this day in history don't go anywhere we'll be back in a few Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's gonna teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops, the rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and you left with money ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit twomin2x.org to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. This message is for all of you sitting in the passenger seat, and apologies if it gets a little uncomfortable, but how does it feel to be at the mercy of someone who thinks a random text is more important than your life? Someone who takes their eyes off the road while speeding along in a three-ton hunk of steel. Freaky, right? 
Well, why not just ask them to stop? Or better yet, volunteer to text for them. It might be a little awkward, but believe me, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. <laughs> Apparently, they have no comment. Dads, let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. The storks are bringing me a baby brother. We can do this together. All right, let's go. Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't. <laughs> oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this. You will rock this. To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies. Like, like the storm. storm. When, when it kicked in, in we had we a plan. Separated. We, we were able to get in touch with each other in no, no time. Idea how to find each other. The, the whole experience, experience was, was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm to and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Get everything you need for the Christian Phoenix Radio Show over at phoenixmedia.us or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash phoenixmediaradio. Now back to the show. And we are back. You know, it is the fourth and final segment of this hour of the Christian Phoenix Radio Show, Monday, October 19th. It just flew by. But if you missed a portion of the show or want to go back and catch up on any of the previous shows, it's easy enough to do so. Head over to phoenixmedia.us, click on the show's link, scroll on down to the Christian Phoenix Radio Show. From there, you can get video, you can get audio as well. Or head over to wherever you get podcasts. Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Anchor Breaker, TuneIn, iHeart, Doozer, Dozer, Geezer, Gozer. Are you a god? How about new? Oh, Dr. <laughs> Evil doomed us to the Stay Puff Marshmallow. That's man. right, freaky deaky. I brought back Stay Puff, and you know what? He's going to terrorize everybody. <laughs> While you're there, be sure to subscribe. That way you always have the latest episode. Leave a review, let us know what you think, and tell your friends because why, Tony? Tushy is squishy and sharing is caring. I couldn't agree more. Well, folks, it is the final segment tushy, of the show. Tushy. And as we like to do each and every day is drop a little knowledge on you, hopefully make you laugh as well. It is this day <laughs> in history. Reversing the globe for the stories that turn the world on its head. It's this day in history with your correspondence on the beat. Christian Phoenix. Thank you, Siri. All right. Well, let's it kick still off. still makes me laugh. You know, we've been doing that for a while, and that's... For whatever reason, still get a chuckle. <laughs> it, it beat having to record, re-record the entire segment intro, and just dropping Siri in there makes makes things so much easier and fun. I too, like so. it, buddy. All right, let's kick off this day in history. This day in 1512, Martin Luther, not King Jr., just Martin Luther, becomes a doctor of theology, and of course, he is the basis for the Lutheran sect arm, whatever you want to call it, of the Christian religion. Gotcha. I thought you were going to say he's John Cena and he's the doctor of thugonomics. <laughs> I like those odds. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. All right. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. I don't. All right. <laughs> Moving on this day in 1781, British forces under General Charles Cornwallis signed terms of surrender to George Washington at Comte de Rochambeau 
at Yorktown at 2 p.m., ending the U.S. Revolutionary War. Wow, that is very specific about uh, the day, time, and place of uh, when that all happened. Yeah. So Rochambeau, is that, isn't that where you go kick the other person in the nuts? No, that's uh, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, maybe I got that from South Park. <laughs> Rochambeau was like they went and kicked uh, it was I just remember Cartman kicking some one of the kids in the nuts on that show whatever I'll do what I want I'm glad you had that sound bite <laughs> alright moving on this day in 1853 the first flour mill in Hawaii begins operations and uh, boy everything we do nowadays revolves around flour and production and, and so that was a, a huge get back in uh, 1853 that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Carbs. Love carbs. We need a, uh, 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 oh, what's her name? Martha Stewart drop. It's a good thing. It's a good thing, but <laughs> we don't have that. We don't. Here's one that everybody knows the song this day in 1901. Edward Elgar's Pomp and Circumstance March premieres in Liverpool. And uh, of course, if you've ever gone to a graduation, it's what you hear. Or if you ever saw, was it Ric Flair? Um, no. Nope. He was the macho man. That's the right. The savages, the music. Yeah, it was, brother. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know why he picked that one. Ric Flair's was uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's it, every time I hear so, it, I think of the old uh, uh, NES uh um, WWF game because they had uh -huh. that horrible MIDI version of him coming. Oh out yeah. <laughs> I should have done a match. The cream of the crop. All right, moving on this day in 1926. I really only picked this one because this guy's picture is awesome. Um, wish I could share it, but I can't. But uh, Russian Pol Pol I don't know what that is. Throws out. Bullet Burrow, my picture profile on Tinder is very sexy. If you swipe right, I give you good date night. <laughs> Throws out <laughs> Leon Trotsky and his followers. And if you think of a 1920s Russian, uh, that's this guy is iconically 1920s Russian. Yes, I want to take you out on Tinder in 1920. We don't swipe right. I just grab you by hair. I take you out and I say, eat this food, please. <laughs> I made, mama made it for you. Now you eat. <laughs> Moving on this date in 1932, Henry Ford gives his first radio speech. I know he obviously founded the Ford Motor Company. The Model T was a, um, mm -hmm. a huge thing in the world of assembly lines. I didn't realize that he did radio speeches. I have to see if I can find Radio one speech, this. one day you will buy the Ford Escape. It's a 2018, it's a hot car, it'll get you around, it looks very beautiful, and at 64,000 miles, your engine will take a big fat crap, and you will be stranded as Ford Radio Motors. Thank you for listening to the Christian Phoenix Radio Show, Phoenix Media Network. Thank you. Where did you pull that clip from, Tone? It's, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I right. basically mimicked the intro to this segment. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. This day in sports history, 1957, Montreal Canadien Maurice Rocket Richard becomes the first Richard. NHLer to score 500 goals. Uh, that Damn. was a big. That was a big feat, especially back then when their goalies had, I mean, the pads covered basically the entire goal, and it was almost impossible to score. They get today's good job. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Here's a name that came up earlier, but in a different iteration. This day in 1960, Martin Luther King Jr. is arrested at an Atlanta sit-in and uh, for a civil rights act. And we mentioned uh, last week that uh, after this period in time, he had won a Nobel Peace Prize. So uh, good on you, Martin Luther King. Yes. Uh, oh, good for you. Speaking of NHL, this day in 1966, Bobby Orr makes his NHL regular season debut for the Boston Bruins against the Detroit Red Wings. And if you are a Bruins fan, that Bobby Orr is a name synonymous with that franchise. Yeah. Oh, my! He's on fire! I know that's a basketball <laughs> one, but whatever. I don't think NHL had a version of that. So. They didn't. They didn't. There were some fun uh, NHL games, though. Uh, a Blades yeah, of Steel. They yeah, they mimicked some stuff, but never quite NBA Jam-ish. No, no. But, uh, oh, Blades of Steel was so much fun when you would get into a fight with the other player. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, so much fun. All right. That's one badass thing about hockey is that you can actually, they let them throw fists for a minute. They do. They do. I never understood why, but, you know, it just seems to be part of the game now. So, yeah. All right. Moving on this day in 1973, the worst of the individual Beatles, Ringo Starr releases his music single for Photograph in the UK. Again, much better together than they were apart. But you know what? They had to move on after uh, Yoko Ono and John Lennon broke everything up. And uh, unfortunately, two of them didn't live long enough for them to get back together and, and do any sort of reunion tour. So I put out my song. It was called Her Photograph. That's all I have. That's all I want. <laughs> I thought you were going to go into uh, the Ringo Starr version of Nickelback's photograph. Yeah. Look at this photograph. <laughs> All right, moving on this day in 1990, Dances with Wolves, directed by Kevin Costner and starring Kevin Costner and Mary McDonald, premieres in Washington, D.C. and won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1991. Uh, fantastic movie. Of course, that was Kevin Costner in his prime. He hadn't quite reached uh, Waterworld status yet that uh, essentially killed his career for the next yeah, decade. Yeah, well, God, that's because he kept doing those epic three-hour movies that were so damn long. Man. Yeah, and I was also disappointed that he never really danced with wolves in that movie. No, no. I was waiting for like a little, uh, ho you know, like some hoedown dances, some swing dancing. Little, yeah, it was a little disappointing. A little music montage in, in the middle of a battle scene. Yeah, I was waiting for some Footloose, but it never happened. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's move on. This day in 1999. <laughs> so dumb. The song "Believe" single is released by Cher. And it was a Billboard Song of the Year for 1999 and Grammy Award Best Dance Recording for the year 2000. Uh, never a big yeah, share fan. Yeah, exactly. It's as good as you remember it, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Not a big share fan. In the world. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan of her as an actress or a singer, but hey, you know, people love her and that's why she won all sorts of awards yeah but did you enjoy the could you turn if you turn back time video when you were a kid i, I couldn't get past butt, the there hair was a lot of butt cheeks up on that yeah i mean if you look from basically the shoulders down it was okay but uh i know her face always uh yeah and the voice was <laughs> always just a little too much <laughs> how do you really feel tone <laughs> Finally, I'm myself up on a Monday. This day in 2005, Saddam Hussein goes on trial in Baghdad for crimes against humanity, and he was eventually executed. And uh, the world is a better place without him. So uh, I would agree. I always thought as a kid that his name was so damn insane, but hey. yeah, it's pretty true. It Saddam did. Hussein, Saddam. Insane. <laughs> and before we head out for the day, let's run down some holidays for uh, this day, Monday, October 19th. Holidays! Today is Dress Like a Dork Day. Every day. Also every day, Evaluate Your Life Day. Oh gosh, I do that every break and every minute uh, of every day. Here's an odd one. International Adjust Your Chair Day. Okay. It is International Gin and Tonic Day. Well, go smoke some juice. <laughs> I screwed that one up. <laughs> I uh, think like a little midget after adjusting yeah, you my seat. <laughs> <laughs> it is National Clean Your Virtual Desktop Day, which is always a good thing. National Seafood Bisque Day, which is always good. And it is New Friends Day. So go out there, make some new friends, have a fun one. And folks, when we come back, we will see you uh, on a Tuesday, and we're going to do Animal Tales. So you won't want to miss that tomorrow. In the meantime, have a wonderful Frankie. Monday. Oh, and Ray Kidd. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. She really likes to be around people. I get out my mat and I